The flow in this WTF episode is available on the TDG site. Click on the Power Platform bank, filter to flow, and it is this flow here. Happy flowing! Hey everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to show you how you can store a date input into a CDS date time field. This is an advanced level topic and I'm going to give you a quick explanation of what inputs are available for the trigger when a record is selected. I'm going to talk about what the problem is if you try and use it immediately and then I'm going to show you how you can store it correctly into a CDS date time field. So in terms of the inputs that are available today in the trigger, these are the ones that you can select. The one that I'm using is the date input. And basically an input is a value that the end user enters. And for the date input, they are able to select a date from a calendar type of style UI. <coughs> Excuse me. So the problem is if you try and use it immediately and you reference that date input into a date time field in a CDS action, now this could be a create new record action or it could be updating an existing record. It's going to not quite behave in the way you would expect it to. And I'm going to explain why. So when you run your flow, it's going to show that your actions have succeeded. And at this point, you're like, hey, it works. However, when you look into the detail of the flow, for the action that is grabbing the date input, so in this scenario, it's showing 6th of April, that looks OK. But then when you look into the detail of your action that is creating your new record, when you look at the date value, you're going to see the date being correct, but then you're going to see the time showing as midnight. So when the end user views it in the model driven app, it's going to show as 11 a.m. Now, you might be like, oh, why is it doing that? And the reason behind it is UTC is the format that is used by Flow, Dynamics 365, and CDS. So midnight in UTC will equal 11 a.m. in the end user's time zone. So my end user is based in Melbourne in Australia, and that's why they're seeing it as 11 a.m. So in some cases, this isn't <coughs> desirable. Sorry, I'm still recovering from a cough, but I'm still filming this WTF episode. <clears throat> so in some cases, this may not be acceptable and you may want to give it a default value of your own no matter what time zone the end user is in and <coughs> this is what I'm going to go through in my WTF episode today. So it does require knowing the user's time zone who has triggered the flow and this is using a combination of actions and expressions. So without further ado, let's jump into the demo. All right, so in the past, there have been other MVPs in our community who have blogged about retrieving the time zone details of a user. So there is a blog post that's available on the Dynamic CRM Tip of the Day website. Now, they don't just do Dynamic CRM Tips. They do Power Platform Tips, so that includes Power BI, Power Apps, and Flow. So I recommend that you follow CRM Tip of the Day on Twitter as well as follow the blog and it goes into detail of the actions that uh, has been used in the flow and the flow is also available for download and I'm going to go through that flow with you shortly and then another MVP in our community by the name Natraj who you also may know as the Chrome Level Up Tools guy he's also done a blog post today and he's also referenced how you can grab the user settings using the Xerium toolbox, user settings utility. But for this WTF episode today, I'm sticking to the flow that is available on the CRM Tip of the Day website. So when you download the flow, it looks like this. And I'll go through the actions in detail. So I'm going to switch over to my flow for this WTF episode. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. 
So my trigger is when a record is selected and when um, a date has been entered, so I'm using the date input. The next action that I'm going to use in my WTF flow is a compose action. The reason why I'm using a compose action is because I want to retrieve the date input value. And basically you reference the input from your trigger. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so the next actions are pretty much the same actions that you, that you would see in the CM tip of the day flow. So the second action that is being used in the flow is to get my profile. So if you know the details that you're after, you can enter in the fields in here, or you can also use the get user profile, which is gonna retrieve all the details of that user, which is what I'm doing in here. And the way I'm grabbing it is based on the user that has triggered the flow in here. So this is um, my dynamic content that I'm referencing. And then the next step is we're using the list records action. So the reason why we're using the list records action and not the get record action is because the get record action is usually used when you want to reference the owner field based on a record. But in this use case, we aren't referencing the owner of the record we are referencing the user who has triggered the flow. So we can't use the get user record action. We have to use the list records action. And when you use the list records action, I'm going to jump into Notepad++ just to explain the next bit in detail to you. There is a property called the Azure Active Directory Object ID. And so basically this is a GUID and this represents the GUID in profile of the, of the user. This is also stored in, in CDS. And so basically this is what this filter query is doing. So it's basically saying, um, give me the user from this action in here. And so that's why we're using the property Azure Active Directory object ID. And we want to make sure that we're only retrieving the user who has triggered the flow. And we're doing it through this action in here. And then in the next step, what we're doing is um, we're grabbing the system user ID. Now you could get away and not using this compose action. But the reason why we're doing this is so that we're keeping basically the flow tidy. If you did not use a compose action, you will see the apply to each uh, appear. And that's because in here, it's pretty much producing a collection. And within that collection, you've got um, your, your users. So basically it's an, it's an array. And so we know that we're only ever gonna reference the one user. And that's why we use the function of first. And at the very end of the expression, that's where we include the property of system user ID, because that's all we are after. And so based on that system user ID, we can now grab the user settings in CDS for that user. And to get to that user, we're pretty much referencing the user ID in here, which is done through that compose. And then in terms of the get time zone, name of the user. So I went through this in a previous, in my previous WTF episode. So I'll quickly jump into Notepad++ again. When you reference the time zone definition, you're basically going to get an array. So you're going to get all of these um, elements or objects uh, that will contain information about the time zone. And for each time zone, um, there's going to be a code and there's also going to be the name of the time zone. And in your filter query, you pretty much want to reference the time zone code of the user. And we are retrieving it from this action in here. So that's what this dynamic content represents. And when you do that, it's only going to return you this chunk of the time zone definition because you're pretty much saying, I only want the time zone definition of 
the user who triggered the flow. So I kind of went through this more in detail in my previous WTF episode. So if you want to understand this more, refer to that WTF episode. And then the next thing that we do is in this compose action, again, we are using the function of first because we know that we're only going to use one value and we're referencing the standard name, which represents the time zone name. So again, if we didn't do this, we would get the apply to each appear. So this is keeping the flow tidy. Okay. So the next action that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a compose action because now that we have the time zone information of the user, what we want to do now is actually format that value that will be stored in CDS. And so what I mean by that is we now want to uh, set the time to be 9 a.m for that date that the user has entered. So in this scenario, we're gonna use an expression and the function that we're gonna use, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, better. Okay, so the function that we're gonna use is format date time. And in here is where we want to select the output of the date entered. So behind here, but you can't see it right now, is I'm going to select the dynamic content tab. And we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And we're going to grab that date input value output. Okay, so then the next step in here is this is where, so if I scroll up, we need to enter the format of the string. So this is what this tooltip is doing. Oh, man, now I can't get past it. <laughs> so this is where we can go ahead and enter in the time that we want. So I'm going to set it to um, 9 a.m. So the format that I'm using is the standard format of entering it as, as UTC. Okay. All right, so now that I've done that, and let me just double check that it is correct. Yeah, that's cool. The next action that we want to do is we want to use the convert time zone action. Because remember that Dynamics 365, CDS, and Flow all use UTC. So if we want the date and time to appear in 9 a.m. of the user's local time zone, we need to convert it into UTC, which is what we're doing in this action. So in this base time, <coughs> I'm now going to reference the uh, set time of date time value output from my compose action. And in the source time zone, this is where we can select the output from the compose action in here, because we're now able to uh, reference the time zone of the user which is what this compose action does. And then in terms of the destination time zone, as I mentioned, because Dynamics 365 CDS and Flow use UTC, that's what we're using as the destination time zone. And then in terms of formatting the string, we're going to use the ISO standard. So now in my <coughs> CDS action that is creating a new record. In the due date, we can now reference that converted time output. And yeah, we can pretty much now test our flow. And you should see that the flow works. And it's crossed. Okay, so here's my flow. I'm now going to enter in a date. So this is what the date input looks like when you're triggering your flow from a selected record, you're gonna see a calendar type of UI appear. And now when I click on run flow, my flow is gonna trigger and run. So now if we go back into flow and we check that the flow has successfully executed. Yes, it looks like it has. So here's my flow, it's succeeded. And now when we go into my model-driven app 
and we have a look at the task, we should now see that the task is set to 9 a.m. and that is based on my time zone. So now when I open this up, I'm going to see it as 9 a.m. And that is my WTF episode for today. I have shown you how you can correctly store the date input, including a time in the CDS date time field. This also applies to Dynamics 365 as well. If you enjoyed this WTF episode, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below or also give me a shout out on Twitter. I have more WTF episodes coming, so make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and help me get to 1,000 subscribers. I'm also on Twitter, so follow me there, and I also have my own blog. Thanks for tuning in, it means a lot to me, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Turn up! Let's go! Let's go!